that can be. Uh, not necessarily a different kind of search. The way that you search, you know. Uh, today, when I say to you, hey, you know, look, there is this nice restaurant down the road. It's a piece of authenticated information. Wouldn't it be great if people could piggyback on other people's experiences and find things through other people? That would be a great thing. You know, instead of me searching if Jennifer Lopez is married or not, why don't I ask someone who already knows the answer? Right. So it, it those are like, the technologies that I'm talking about. And it sounds like we're starting to get there. I mean, some of the new um, things that Google has rolled out, Google Latitude, for example, where you have on your cell phone, you can get little images of where all your friends are, and if they're near restaurants, you can have notes that have been left by other people who have gone to the restaurant that you may know and so forth. I mean, it sounds like we're definitely getting there. We are. Technology is there. As to who's going to bring it to market is a good question, Mark. All well, the technology is there. Great. Um, I think we have some questions. Boaz? Yes, we do. Our first question is from Gary in New Jersey. Uh, thank you, Boaz. Actually, I'm on the road today in Detroit, normally in New Jersey. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm listening very intently to what you gentlemen are saying as we are trying to uh, look into our crystal balls and see what 3.0 will really look at. And the one thing that uh, it seems to me, based on what you're saying, is that this social networking that drove 2.0 will probably bridge to 3.0. At least that's what it sounds like you are suggesting. How will that work, uh, do you think, in the new Internet? And I have a follow-up question. All right. Well, it's a very good question. And you're 100% right. It will bridge us to Web 3.0. And this connectivity we created between people is going to allow us to share our experiences. And that's a key point here in my view. The experiences that you have, you, you have your own personal experiences about what you do, what you buy, what you surf, you know, where, you know, what you do on the Internet. And why can't I benefit from it as another user? It is that bridge that we're going to be able to, uh, that it is that gap that we're going to be able to bridge in Web3, I hope. We'll follow up? So, you know, you, 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 you talk about um, uh, how in, or we look at how in real life these interactions that we have, they're very personal. Well, in reality, even though we are removed from those with whom we are uh, enacting, uh, uh, with acting with interacting with uh, on on the web, it is for each of us at that particular moment a very personal experience. You're in New Jersey, I'm in Detroit, but this is a very personal discussion that we are having here on Pal Talk. So my question is, how to how do we when we're face to face determine? It's easy for us to determine who we trust on the internet as we continue to expand and more and more people start using the internet for interaction. How do we learn how to trust and who not to trust or what entities to trust and what entities to not trust? And that is the biggest question that we're facing going forward to Web3.0. The only thing you have in virtual world is these pixels. So Gary, now I see you as a pixel on my uh, laptop here. Hey, you know, where you? Uh, so all we see is a pixel. So how can I know whether this pixel is good or better than the other pixel? I have no idea. This is why we have to start bringing new technologies to allow us to trust what we see. And that is the big thing that's going to happen in Web3, I believe. In real world, we have five senses. I can see you, I can smell you, I can touch you, I can feel you, and I can taste you. Not, not Hopefully today. not <laughs> usually. Not, yeah, not, not, yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there are five different senses that we have. And surroundings is another thing. You know, If you go to a shopping mall, then if you go into a shop within a shopping mall, you'll be more at ease than going to a shop in middle of nowhere. So we have many senses that we use to create or to add authentication to our decisions. Yet on internet, these are non-existent. So we need to start creating those five senses on internet. What are those five senses going to be? It's going to be the tools that companies are going to start generating for us to use. Well, I mean, obviously, even in the real world, when we can sit with somebody and they're not taste them, but you know, with them and so forth. Sometimes People still get <laughs> scammed, right? So you have Bernard, Bernie Madoff, 50 or $65 billion that he stole and, and so forth. He fooled hundreds of people over time. So 
as these technologies come out and you eliminate the kind of scam that we talked about last week where somebody was pr pretending to be a Facebook friend and it turned out it was somebody in Nigeria and very, very effective because you are totally, as you say, you are not on guard when it is your friend's picture and it purports to be your friend and they're saying, hi, how are you? And for at least a couple of minutes, it kind of sounds like your friend. Incredibly easy to get fooled. And it sounds like what you're talking about is will eliminate that. The technology will come in and make that clear. But presumably, you've also got some very sophisticated criminals who, who will actually start to use the technology. And if people are lulled to sleep, in a way, they don't know, that, that ultimately you can use the technology to help in the crime as well. So, Most you, I mean, you know, there, you see, in 1990s, when people used to ask me, you know, 100% security, does it exist? I used to say, yes, 100% security does exist. And it exists in a form of a black hole in the universe because you can throw your passwords at it and you know that you're not going to be able to get it back. But even that is proven wrong now because when you throw things at a black hole, it radiates depending on what goes inside. My point is 100% security is non existent. Technologies exist to mitigate those risks. Today, again, uh, if you remember the chart that I showed you, uh, it's not about 100% eliminating risks, but making it manageable. And I believe today we have no tools to manage this huge risk that we have today that is going to be exploited. The vulnerabilities we have are going to be exploited. No two ways about it. And we have no tools to be able to mitigate that risk down to a manageable level. That's right. And they are being exploited, clearly, as we've talked about in mean, your fishing example and Very so much forth. So. Great. We've got another question. Go ahead, Boaz. I'm um, Leon Henry. I am pleased to introduce reporter Kim Lifton, who has written extensively for the Detroit Free Press and who is launching her new blog, ConsumerKim.com, which will give consumer advice, including that involving the Internet. Kim? Hi there, guys. Um, Hi. I have one serious question and another one, but first, I, w I don't quite understand the difference between um, web 2.0 and web 3.0. So if you can explain that, then I'll ask my uh, my very good question when you're done. I don't think you're alone there. Yeah, I, I think pretty much everyone yeah, else. All of us. Yeah. You, know, uh, you see, 2 or 3 or there is no clear definition of what 2 or was or 3 or was. People have different ideas. I think 2 or refers to a time period and, you know, what we saw with social networking. And so we are now starting this thing called 3.0. And, and what it means is the future of internet, and it's based on semantic web, i.e., you know, a, a web that understands, you know, what you are asking, and you know, or authentication. So Web 3.0 is about a web that understands what you are asking and being able to authenticate information. So, so that's the basic difference. Let me let me just follow up and push you on that a little bit because I don't. It, explain more about the semantic web because I, I feel like the web's pretty good at understanding what I'm asking now. And you've got these great specialized search engines and specialized sites and Facebook is extraordinarily good at what Facebook does and yeah. and yet I do hear people talk all the time, 